World Cancer Day is observed on February 4th every year and this day aims to promote awareness about cancer. Hi, I'm Dr. Lakshmi and you're watching Yashoda Hospitals, the health talk session where all your health-related queries are answered here. So let's discuss and know more about cancer in our today's episode. Joining our discussion today is Dr. Naidu Bethun, medical oncologist and hemato-oncologist from Yashoda Hospitals, High Tech City. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Hello. So, Dr. Naidu, the need for creating awareness about cancer was felt especially in the current scenario where cancer is considered as epidemic. So, what do you think we all should know about cancer in general? I think the question answers it all, right? In the sense, the in incidence of all non-communicable diseases, diabetes, hypertension, heart-related ailments, obesity, and cancers in general have increased over the past decade. And the incidence has increased of all cancers in the sense previously when olden times it used to be cervix and majorly head and neck. But now you see all the cancers of the developed world like breast, colon, uh, lung, all the incidence of all sorts of cancers have increased over the last few decades. And it's important to be aware about cancer and also its symptoms primarily so that you can detect it at an early stage. You can probably cure it if detected at an early stage and the financial burden would also be considerably low if you treat it at an early stage. That's the reason we need to be aware about cancers in general. I think you made an important point that it's detection of cancer at early stage. So what are some common cancers that we are seeing today and what are some important screening tests that we should know? The commonest cancer symptoms are what we call as warning symptoms for cancer would be cough which is persistent for more than three weeks, weight loss of more than six kgs in the past three months, okay. any non-healing ulcer, painless lump in the breast or any growing lump anywhere in the body, uh, any altered bowel habits, uh, especially it's in people who tend to go to the washroom frequently. Previously it was not there, but it's happening recently and it's been persistent. You know, the symptoms should be persistent for a few weeks. You cannot have a common cold and cough and go to the doctor immediately fearing cancer. You need to be aware the other diseases are far more common. Any symptoms which persist, like we said, uh, cough persistent, cough which is persistent, weight loss which is persistent loss of appetite which is persistent, any pain in a particular site which is persistent, non-healing ulcers, painless lumps, uh, especially for the, any change in voice or hoarseness of voice. These, all, these are the commonest symptoms which we say as soon as you get the symptom, please go to a doctor and evaluate for any kind of disease or cancer. Other screening tests, the normal screening modalities, when do we do screening? We don't screen for every cancer. We screen for certain cancers where the incidence is high and detecting it at an early stage would definitely benefit the patient. So the screening guidelines are very clear in certain cancers like breast, cervix, um, prostate, colon. The other cancers do not have too many screening guidelines as of now, until unless it runs in the families. And familiar cancers are only about 3% of the population. So previously, cancer was still under the shadows and it was a myth that cancer can occur only if it runs in the family. So why do you think this has changed and what are some factors contributing to this? It's a fallacy that people believe that one can get only cancer only if it runs in the families. Cancers have always been sporadic. Majority of the cancers, about 97% of the cancer patients we see, do not have cancers in their families. It's only the 3% who have cancers running in their families. Uh, so cancers being genetic or cancers being spread by contact and all those things are, is, a, is, not, is wrong. A very few cancers are genetic. The incidence of cancers in the last, has increased in the last few decades, primarily due to many reasons, right? Urbanization, uh, we, people, the survival, the longevity of each person has increased. 
the average survival was 40 years when we had independence. Now it's approximately 72. As age increases, we are all at risk for every cancer on the planet. Okay. Uh, we are at risk for cancers. Okay. Diet. The air we breathe. The uh, food habits have changed. The physical activity has come down. We usually uh, are st stuck to the chair more often than not. A uh, lot of things. Basic, as we become a develop, we became a developing country or a developing developed country. A lot of things changed. Food habits, air pollution, industrial pollution, pesticides, herbicides, usage of usage of them in food, uh, in farming, all many risk factors. All those smoking, to tobacco chewing. Uh, these are widely blamed for everything. They are also the other, there are many other reasons which probably are not very well exemplified as of now. So we have seen that oncology is witnessing some remarkable changes with cutting edge technology and innovative approaches. So what are some recent advancements that we have seen, especially in medical oncology, doctor? In the last few decades, definitely oncology has seen some remarkable progress. And also, uh, increase in survivals, increase in response rates, a lot of therapies have changed. These days, we do not treat blindly. We try to evaluate in terms of targets, genetics, mutations, and prescribe a patient according to the signature of the cancer, m more often than not. And um, we see a lot of oral therapies now, immunotherapies, CAR-T therapies, and the supportive care for cancer patients has also increased. The pain management has increased. People do survive longer without pain, without suffering. Quality of life is a lot better these days than previously. So before we wrap this episode, Doctor, what message you would like to share with our audience out there on the occasion of World Cancer Day? I think one should be aware of their body, one. Ed learn, educate yourself about symptoms, but to be anxious is wrong. There are e cancers which are easier to detect by physical examination, by self-examination, where being aware of the symptoms, but, but thinking every symptom is cancer is wrong. And also to have the best way is to prevent it, right? We, we have certain things to prevent, not... It doesn't mean that you try everything on the planet, cancers won't come. But what we can do is we can actually um, be a, lead a little more healthy lifestyle. Smoking, alcohol, moderate your alcohol intake, exercise, diet, okay. uh, eating less junk food, controlling obesity, being fit, okay. uh, those things. Otherwise, there are not many things to do and vaccinations for certain cancers like cervix and hepatitis b and hepatocellular liver cancer hepatitis b so thank you doctor it was wonderful having you here on the episode today yeah thank you so this brings us to the end of this episode remember cancer can affect anybody but there is hope for everybody and early detection and prevention is the key do join us for next week as well for more insightful episodes from yashoda hospitals the health talk session until then, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.